Oh, you better believe I see it. I know. Get your praise off. Praise the Lord. I'm telling y'all. Mm. Amen. We thank the Lord for another opportunity to come together to learn more of his word. The Bible tells us to grow. Brother Deacon, you talking about faith. The Bible talks about faith as being as a grain of a mustard seed. But then it says it grows into a great tree. Yes, sir. And all the fowls of the air are lodged there. Wonderful Savior. So that's what we do. We grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we are commanded to do, to grow. And how are you going to grow if you don't get the word? All right. The only way you can grow right is by the word. There's plenty of folks growing, but they're growing the wrong way. <laughs> we give honor to God today who is my life. I praise and thank him for Jesus Christ. Praising and thanking him for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, which is our comfort, our guide, and our keeper. Giving honor to Elder Lucas, to Sister Lucas, to Elder Mitchell, Deacon Williams, Deacon Ross, uh, brother, brother Otis and his family, to uh, Sister Williams and to the grandbabies, and give honor to my wife. We thank the Lord for each and every last one of you. Uh, I want to speak to you tonight out of Romans chapter 7. And there's a doctrine that's out in... Uh, you know, we know better here, but people need to understand that we don't sin. When you come into Jesus Christ, we are not, uh, uh, it's not found in Scripture that we're going to fall and that we're going to sin. And many times, those who uh, profess that doctrine and teach that doctrine, they'll point to Romans chapter 7. Not having an understanding that Paul in Romans chapter 7 is not speaking of his life in Christ. He was speaking of his life before Christ. Because if you look back in Romans chapter 6 real quick at verse number 1. Romans chapter 6 and at verse number 1. We know 6 come before 7. <laughs> right. So in Romans chapter 6 in verse number 1 Paul says... What shall we say then? Shall we, he, that's including himself, right? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then he answers that rhetorical question with God forbid. Then it says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So that's understanding right there that we don't live anymore in sin when we're dead to sin once we have come to the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and receive saving grace. So now Romans chapter 7, which is where many who profess that even Paul, they'll say even Paul, that's supposed to give you a license. Because everybody knows Paul was a great man of God. So if you could understand Romans chapter 7 that Paul is... Uh, uh, falling and struggling and, and ain't, ain't perfect and all this and every, every, every phrase that people use today to excuse their disobedience to Jesus Christ. If you look at Romans chapter 7 that that's what Paul is saying then you can feel real comfortable if not even Paul could do it mm -hmm. so that's what they try to use but not knowing that Paul had already laid it down in Romans chapter 6 and said we don't could God forbid that we continue in sin. So now, Romans chapter 7 and uh, verse number 5. And we can see the language he's talking past tense here. Romans chapter 7 and verse number 5, Paul says, For when we were in the flesh. That means when we, we, we know he's alive, he's still in a fleshly body. But he's talking about when we walked according to the flesh. And he said, when we were in the flesh. The motions or the passions of sin, which were by the law, meaning you don't know sin. Sin is not chargeable unto you or you don't know what sin is until you know what right is, until you have a law. So he says, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. We did that which would cause us to have to die because the wages of sin is death. He says, but now, 
So right there, anybody that can read will see that he's talking about something in the past that is now changed. He says, but now we are delivered from that, the law, that being dead wherein we were held, we were held in our dead in trespasses and sin, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So now he's talking about victory over sin. Verse 7, he said, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. See, you could be in sin, but sin is not chargeable to you unless you know that it's sin. And we know that the scripture says, for him that know what to do good and doeth it not, to him is a sin. Amen. So when the law comes along, the law came along because men were transgressors. And in order for a man to be shown that he was wrong, he's got to be shown God who is right. All right. And when the law is given, you can look and see, I'm wrong, and God has sent a savior, and you can say, Lord, save me from my wrongs. Save me from my sin. That's what salvation is all about. But if you don't know you need a savior, you just keep on fumbling and bumbling in darkness. You just keep on walking in sin until you get somebody that can shine some light on you. And that's Jesus Christ. So he says, verse seven, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? No, the law is not sin. God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. It's because of the law that I know I'm a sinner. He said, for I had not known lust, except the law, he said, had said. See, so he's still talking past tense when he realized that he was a sinner. And when the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Then he's going on to talk about how he was back then. He said, but sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. That means all manner of desire. For without the law, sin was dead. In other words, before the law, sin was dead to me. Even though born in sin, but not charged. That's why if a, a child, a baby die, crib death, whatever the case, that child go on to be with the Lord because that child has not come to the understanding of the law. But once you get on up some size and you come to the understanding of the law, you are now guilty before God and chargeable for the wrongs that you do. And Jesus Christ is saying, would you come? Wonderful Savior. All right. He said, verse nine, look at this, what he said. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, so you can see right there, alive. Alive mean, meaning uh, uh, not going to die. No wages of uh, uh, sin on you. No death penalty on you because you didn't know. No law. That's why you can understand about a child. He said, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, law, if you could keep it, would have been your life. You'd have been living right before God. But because we didn't have any power on the inside, the law was on the outside. We didn't have any power on the inside. Because of that, we had no, we had no choice but to be dead to God. It was ordained to life, but I found to be unto death. This is why we need Jesus Christ. This is why law on the books in the United States of America don't matter. Because without a heart being changed, you have no hope. Amen. Wonderful Savior. He says in the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. So we can have all kind of commandments, all kind of laws. But if we don't have Jesus Christ to change our hearts, we still got death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it slew me. The Bible talks about, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, where Paul says that uh, we could be able to say if we die in Christ, oh, 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 death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, yeah. Then it says, for the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Without any law, there's no sin that can be chargeable unto you and death wouldn't have a sting. But because the law has been given 
And if we don't live according to the power of God by way of Jesus Christ to keep the law, then we're going to have sin in our lives. And when we die, death going to have a stain to it. Wonderful Savior. But Jesus Christ is going to make it to where death is going to be a blessing to you. If all we got to do is live according to his word and continue in it by faith in him and keep looking to him. The Bible says he's the author and finisher of our faith. You better stay with him. Amen. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Anything come from God is good. Verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin. This was the purpose of the law so that we could understand that we were in sin. And when you can see you in sin, then you can see you need a savior. But people have taken this passage of scripture here, Romans chapter 7, to justify themselves in their sins, claiming to be saved, claiming to be Christians and followers of Jesus Christ and saints of God, part of the body of Christ. And then I turn around and tell you, ain't nobody perfect. We all sin every day. Somebody is supposed to be saved. And you got teachers, Matthew 24, Jesus said, many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. It's not talking about people going to come saying that they are Jesus Christ. It's talking about people going to come in the name of Jesus Christ, saying I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior, and, sh and say that Jesus is Christ, but they're going to deceive many. And you've got people in there, there, there are many of them out there, and they're well learned, so called, in the scriptures, and have been to seminary, have their doctor's degrees of theology, and have started the hermeneutics and the eisegesis and the exegesis and all these other big fancy words, but then they go over here in Romans chapter 7 and don't know what they're talking about. All right. Go over in Romans chapter 7 and, and, and evidently the power of the Holy Ghost ain't working in them because Jesus said the Holy Ghost going to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Man. Romans chapter 7, you don't even have to have the Spirit of God to understand was and once when we were. Oh, that's past tense. <laughs> uh, that, that, they teach that in, in middle school, elementary, when they first teaching you about the tenses of verbs. Uh -huh. Wonderful Savior. You read this thing for yourself, you understand Paul is talking about when he was in sin before he came to Jesus Christ. He already laid out in chapter 6 that we don't live any longer in sin. We're supposed to be dead to it. How shall we live any longer therein? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Romans 6 and 1, God forbid. Wonderful Savior. Verse 13, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good. Meaning the law showed that I was in sin, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Now you can really understand your uh, desperate state, if you will. And that's the reason the word of God must be preached because it's a mirror that'll show people who they really are. Because most people without the word of God, they think they all right. They'll, they'll judge themselves according to the standard of humanity, the standard of the society you live in. I'm a pretty good person. You know, I ain't never been to jail. You know, some people can even tell you I ain't never got a traffic ticket and all that. But if you don't know Jesus, you hell bound. Hmm? If you don't know Jesus, you in sin. All right. Only Jesus can save you from sin. Amen. Wonderful Savior. And even Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 let you know and bags this up that you got to see Jesus Christ, the light of the world, in order to see yourself. <laughs> Isaiah said that the year the king of I died, I saw the Lord. High and lifted up in his train filled the temple. And then he said, then said I, woe is me. For I'm a man of unclean lips. Then he said, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So if everybody got unclean lips and I got unclean lips, I'm all right. Hmm? But when I see the Lord, when I see the Lord, now I can understand that not only woe, it's a personal thing. Woe is me. But the rest of y'all need to understand. Woe is everybody around here. Right. We need a savior. All right. Wonderful savior. Oh, bless his name. Yes. 
Verse 14 says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold unto sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, what I would, that do I not. What I would do, I don't do it. But what I hate, that do I. Then he said, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He's not saying he's not responsible for what he's doing. What he's saying is I don't have any power over sin. It's the sin that got power over me. All right. I need help here is what he's saying. In verse number 18, he said, for I know that in me, he said, that is in my flesh. This is, you think, if you got flesh, you need Jesus. Amen. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. I want to do good. I want to obey God. He said, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. He's still talking about how it was. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, the evil I don't want to do, that I do. How many of us before we came to the Lord said, I ain't going to do that no more. <laughs> or I'll never do that. You see somebody else do something crazy. They be like, ain't nowhere in the world. This crazy. How's how she running after him like that? <laughs> or how he running after her like that? Ain't nowhere in the world. Next thing you know, two years down the road, there you go. <laughs> Doing the same thing. Wonderful Savior. You can't say what you won't do. Matthew 6 and 24 said there are two masters and oftentimes right here we say you're not one of those masters. No, sir. So that means that you got a master. Somewhere one of the two is your master. Yes, sir. So you ain't making no choices of, of, of when you outside of Jesus Christ and you ain't serving that master and the devil your master. I don't care how sweet you are, how nice you are, how well spoken you are. If you don't know Jesus Christ, the devil is your master. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Wonderful Savior. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, he's your master. And you better not fix your mouth to say what you won't do. And don't look down on anybody that's in the gutter, as we would call it. Because if it wasn't for the mercy of God, you'd be right there in the gutter too. Hmm? Right there. It's only by the grace of God and the mercy of God that we did not go as far as the devil wanted to take us when we were in our sin. Well, he was merciful, wasn't he? Yeah, right. Wonderful Savior. You look out here and you see all these folks, uh, uh, men with men and women with women, and you think, oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm a grown woman. Ain't no way in the world I'd be messing around with another woman. Mm -hmm. mm, you better you better get in Jesus in order for that to be true. Yeah, right. huh? If you ain't in Jesus, you'll mess around and lock lips with another woman, or if you're a man, you'll lock lips with another man. Mm -hmm. all right. If God don't have mercy, and see, the devil want to take you all the way. And the Lord is the one that's stopping him and saying for those who are not saved, he is saying to the devil, I ain't letting you take them that far. All right. Wonderful saying folks think it's them standing. Yeah. They think they standing. The Lord is the only, he, he is even saving us when we won't yield to him. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in a natural sense. Mm -hmm. You got to yield to him to be saved spiritually. For your soul to be saved. But even your physical person, your personal being is being saved when you are outside the will of God because of his mercy. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Wonderful Savior. Why we ain't died, die, die in our sin? Because he was saving us. Don't, don't think the devil wasn't trying to kill you while you in your sins now. That's what he wants you dead. That, that, that's the, you're just right for killing in the devil's eyes when you're outside the will of God. Amen. Just right. And he's trying to take you out of here. He, he ain't, the devil is not like a, you know how a cat will play with a mouse? The devil ain't like that. The, the devil, he, I want to kill a mouse right now. But God won't let him. The mouse, talking about us. When we, ain't, when we ain't in Jesus Christ, he wants you dead right there. Because he come to kill. It says steal and destroy. It didn't say he come to play games, did it? Hmm? The scripture said he come to kill, steal, and destroy. It don't say he come to play. A lot of folks think, think the, see, they misconstrue the mercy of God as it, like, like, like they just fortunate or uh, I'm all this man, all this woman. The reason I ain't went as far as those folks, it's all about the mercy of God. Verse number 19, for the good that I would, I do not. 
But the evil which I would do, that I do. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 21, I find then a law. He said, I, 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 this is a fact here. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. Uh -huh. And don't you know, even after you get saved, evil is present. You got to resist the devil every day. Every day you got to you got to uh, rebuke thoughts that come to your mind every day. Hmm? But the thing about it is you got the power in Jesus Christ. Now you got another law or another fact that even though evil is present and it comes my way by the grace of God, I can resist the devil and he'll flee from me. Yeah. Wonderful Savior. The scripture said, resist the devil and he'll flee. Yes. Well, tell me what's up going on with these folks who said uh, the saints sin every day. We all fall. What you saying? You ain't resisting the devil. That's all you just, just telling on yourself. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is telling on yourself you ain't resisting the devil. Right. You can resist the devil all day, every day, day in, day out until Jesus come back here. <laughs> Jesus said, go and sin no more. Amen. So don't tell me Jesus is unrighteous. And commanding you to do something that can't be done. Mm -hmm. Now you can't do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody, like I said, you right. Can't nobody. But in Jesus, all we right. all can. Jude said, and, and, and Jude said concerning Christ, he said, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling. Mm -hmm. If Jesus is able to keep you from falling, then any fall is on you. That means you're not doing, you're not holding on to the one that's able to keep you from falling. I picture a father and his, his little child are just learning how to walk. As long as he got a hold, that baby got a hold of daddy's pinky finger. Hmm? He, he ain't falling, he's stepping. Huh? But let him let go and try, he's going, boom, plop down, boom, boom. But as long as they got a hand, of course, and even you even see a child stumble. While they're holding on to grandmama mm -hmm. and their child will swing around but they don't hit their ground. Then they get their foot in back. Yeah. Holding on to mama. Yes. Same way we hold on to Jesus. <laughs> Wonderful Savior. See folks who's falling, hitting that flow, they ain't holding on to the Lord. All right. And then come over here to Romans chapter 7 to try to justify it. Talking about some even Paul. You better look at, look at it again and, and, and get your reading skills together. Verse number 21, I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. He said, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Everybody wants to be right. The Bible, uh, there's a saying that says uh, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. Now, that saying they talking about a physical death, but it applies when they talk about spiritual. You got to die to the will of flesh. You got to die to the will of self. You got to die to the flesh in order to get to heaven. And so there's a, a, a puts a person in a bind there. You got to give up something. You can't have both your flesh be alive and the spirit man be alive too. One of them got to die. If the flesh is going to be alive and you're going to do what the flesh want to do, then you know your soul is dead to God and it's going to die. It, it, the wages of sin is death. But if the spirit man going to be alive, if your soul is going to be alive and pleasing in the sight of God, then that fleshly man got to die. Both can't be alive. The scripture says uh, any man that will save his life shall lose it. But if any man will lose his life, he said, for my sake, he shall find it. It's talking about eternal life. If you give up your life, Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness Everything you want to do If you'll give that up to live according to the word of God By the spirit and the power of God Then you're going to have eternal life But if you, if you seek to, to, to have everything Then you can, you can give it up You're not going to make it in Gather together the Lord said My saints unto me that made covenant with me by way of sacrifice Amen. And see, we live in a world today to tell you that, you know, you need to live your best life. And then they said now. It said now. They said you need to live your best life now. And it's a popular preacher down at Joel Osteen talks about, he wrote a, wrote a book talking about your best life now. How in the world do we have our best life now 
if Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. <laughs> Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. And you going to tell me your life now is better than what the Lord prepared for you? No. <laughs> Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Listen to what he's talking about. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Didn't the scripture say where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? Amen. Paul over here talking about being brought into captivity and what he's talking about is before he came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what he says in verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Sound like Isaiah. Woe is me. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then look at the deliverer in verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Here's the choice right there. The, the will of flesh or the will of God. Verse eight, chapter 8 verse 1 says, there, now look how he's talking. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And in chapter 7 he was talking about that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing and how sin he just kept being brought into captivity. Now over here in verse 8 he's t telling us now about that savior that he came up on in verse 25. That, that now I got a choice. That's what it is. You got a choice to either walk according to the flesh or walk according to the spirit of God. But before Jesus Christ come, we have no choice. I mean, we were destined to die. The death penalty was up on us and Jesus Christ came and said, now, will you, will you live? Will you have life? Mm -hmm. Wonderful savior. Verse, verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation. And watch your, um, your, your, your different translations. You know, you've got these different uh, versions of the Bible. This version, that version. One good way to check for a version is if Romans 8 and 1, if it, if it does not stop at there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Most translations stop right there. But the King James goes on to nail it down because anybody can say that they're in Christ Jesus and there's no description as to what that is in a lot of these new translations. King James goes on to say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Most folks just say, you know, I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm not condemned. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and then walk right off after the flesh. Just got through saying that they ain't condemned, but immediately go and walking in the flesh. King James let us know. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. He was just talking about the law of sin and death in Romans chapter 7. But now he's talking about, according to verse 25, I got Jesus now. He's the one that's going to deliver me from the body of this death. And then in Romans 8 and 2 said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Look what he's going to say. For what the law could not do. He was talking about that law when he said, I had no, no lust. Except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. So you got the law telling me what's right and then you got me standing here before Jesus Christ, Paul is saying, ain't got no power to do what's right. I want to do what's right, but I keep falling in sin. He's all this is talking about before Jesus Christ. But they teach this thing and they teach it in seminary. Jesus said this was going to happen. He said, many shall come in my name saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. And they do it with Romans chapter 7. That's one of them. Wonderful Savior. Thank you, sir. Here's another one that they do it with. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Neither height, nor death, nor principality, nor power. Meaning, once I'm saved, I'm always saved. But it goes on down there and says, neither life, death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor any other creature. That's what the scriptures say. It say any other creature. You can separate yourself from God. And what did the Bible say in Ezekiel? Ezekiel said, if you warn the people, no, he said, if a man be righteous and he turn from his righteousness to sin, that he going to die in his sin and his righteousness that he once had won't even be counted for. Amen. And then likewise, if a man is in sin and unrighteous, but he turn from his unrighteousness and turns to righteousness, his unrighteousness won't be accounted against him. He will be saved. God don't change. Right. Wonderful Savior. Isaiah 59. The Lord said, my hand is not short that it cannot save. Neither is my ear heavy that it cannot hear. But he said, but your iniquities have separated. God don't change. If iniquity separated back in the days of Isaiah, iniquity separates today. In order for a thing to be separated, it must have once been apart. Amen. Hmm? Wonderful Savior, but they teaching this and people are gobbling it up and going off to live raggedy lives claiming that they know Jesus. Because right. it sounds good. It's easy. That's easy. But uh, one preacher friend of mine called it easy believism. Easy believism. It's like that, that's what they got out there. It's easy to believe. It's easy to go on with. We, we fall down. A saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. And then, I mean, that leaves room for me. I'm supposed to die. But if you're telling me that not even Paul could do what Jesus said do, if you're telling me that, then oh, that give me all the license in the world to read you your rights, to give you a piece of my mind, and I might even go upside your head on one of my falls, because we all fall sometime now. And you need to forgive me. The scriptures say forgive me. Then they'll put that one on you. You're supposed to forgive. You know, went upside my head when you shouldn't even did that in the first place. If you got the power of the Holy Ghost, you are not a striker. Amen. Follow peace with all men Amen. and holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. Right. Well, I tell you, he folks something else. And they gobble this stuff up. And when you meet them with the truth of God, the word of God, they'll, they'll, they get mad at you. They discount you. They throw up all these other scriptures that they have bad understanding of. Romans 8 and 3, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son. See, here, here's the Savior. Here's the one that's going to deliver us from the body of death. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Why? That the righteousness of the law might be. It couldn't be before Paul in Romans chapter 7 came to live uh, 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 in Jesus Christ, came to know Jesus Christ. But after Jesus Christ, he said now that the righteousness, that same law that was death unto me, he said that the righteousness of that law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk, here it is again, walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It's too many carnal-minded so-called Christians making up a so-called body of Christ today. It, the body of Christ is way smaller than folks think it is. All right. In this earth today. Everybody that named, that call on Jesus, ain't none of his. All right. Jesus said, everybody, everybody that said, Lord, Lord, should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Lord, saying Lord ain't going to do it. James said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Yes. These folks ain't even doing it. They're doing some of it. And then justify it with we fall down, but we get up. But Jesus said, now to him that's able to keep you from falling, stop all this falling around here. All right. Wonderful Savior. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's why you see all this falling. But they that are after the spirit, the one that pursue the spirit of God, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. One last scripture. First John chapter two. All you got to do is see what the word of God had to say about it. First John chapter two. And at verse number one, scripture reads, my little children, 
The, this is Apostle John writing. This is a, a man of God given scripture by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. The whole purpose, he said, is that you don't sin. Then he says, and if, did he say if? That's a big two letter word. That's a contingent upon us. And if any man sin, I'm saying when. So all people got to do is read the scripture. It don't say and when. If the Bible was teaching us in Romans chapter 7 that we all going to struggle with sin, it would be when there instead of if. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So if a person does sin and do what Jesus said, uh, don't do what Jesus said do, like Jesus said go and sin no more. If you end up in sin or commit some kind of sin, ask the Lord to forgive you and be restored immediately. Uh -huh. Immediately. If you don't do it immediately, something wrong with your spirit. If you don't do it immediately, you're not sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Because right. somebody that's truly sensitive to the Holy Ghost, if they sin, they convict and they're going to say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Immediately. They ain't finna go all day long. Well, they shouldn't have said that to me. <laughs> that, that's flesh operating all day long. Well, that's what they get. The Holy Ghost said, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you. But see, that's how people grieve the Spirit of God. Wonderful Savior. This is the understanding because it is according to the Word of God. We are to go and sin no more. And you can't find in Scripture where sin is okay in the sight of God. That's the end of the message. God bless you.